Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation. So we have dy over dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, equals 1 over y squared minus 1. Now, if you dealt with integrals before, you probably thought of factoring the denominator and then using partial fractions like, you know, 1 over x plus 1 over y plus 1 times y minus 1 and then figuring out uh, the constants like this. So let's go ahead and write it this way. This is actually a technique that is used uh, if our expression is factorable in the denominator. We can basically assume a form of this and then find the a and b values from this uh, equation. And that's going to be the equation of or equality of two polynomials. So we can find the values of a and b and separate this into two uh, expressions. But this, would, this technique would be good if only we had x squared minus 1 instead of y squared minus 1 in the denominator. Because we have the function itself, y squared, it's a different story. So, how does this story proceed? So, here's what we're going to do. First of all, notice that this is a separable differential equation. So, you can go ahead and do the following. You can cross multiply and, you know, integrate both sides. But you can also look at it from an interesting perspective like this one. And dx over dy equals, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. So x and y are going to switch roles. When you flip it, uh, the fraction is going to flip and you're going to end up with y squared minus 1, right? Okay, great. So how is this helpful? So now we're treating x as a function of y and the derivative of x with respect to y is y squared minus 1, which makes sense because x is a function of y, so it's kind of like x is f of y, and when you differentiate, you're going to get an expression in terms of y. So that's normal, right? Okay, and can we just flip it like this? Absolutely. Even though dx over dy doesn't mean dx divided by dy, it's just a notation, but we can abuse the notation a little bit, all right? Cool, cool. So when we look at the solution, and why is that surprise? When we look at the solution in Wolfram Alpha, one of the solutions at least, we get the following. And I'm like, what? What is going on here? And obviously the other two solutions are going to be complex. This also tells you that solving for y in terms of x is not an easy thing. But we'll get to that. Don't worry about it. And don't let this expression scare you because there are more scarier expressions. All right, anyways. So let's pick up from where we left off. Start with the x over dy. And we're going to solve this equation. All right. So we have the x over dy equals y squared minus one. Now at this point you can go ahead and differentiate, I mean integrate. When I said differentiate, I, I, I meant integrate. You could integrate both sides. So think about it. The derivative of x is this. So if you integrate this, you should be getting x, right? Or if you really want to do the separable differential equation thing, you can do the following. Write it like this dx equals y squared minus 1 dy. By the way, you could get this result directly by cross multiplying, multiplying like this. Okay, cool. So this is separable and we separated the variables. Now is the time to integrate both sides. Now when you integrate both sides, left hand side, you're going to integrate dx. That is basically the d and the s. This is, comes from the word sum, by the way, but it's just a stretched s. Uh, they kind of cancel out. Okay, again, abuse of notation, but that gives us x. Here, we just have to integrate y squared minus 1 with respect to y, because we have dy. So x equals, and how do you integrate y squared? What is the power rule? Remember, if you have x to the n dx, that is x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 dx, and you can apply it to y as well. Because the variable doesn't matter here, it's just a dummy variable. And of course, n does not equal negative 1 in this case. We have to specify it, because if n is negative 1, then we get the ln natural log function. Make sense? Okay, let's proceed with this then. y squared is going to be y cubed over 3. And 1 is just, think about it, the derivative of what equals 1 um, if our variable is y, independent variable. And that's going to be y because the derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So, and then don't forget to add the constants. C. Okay. You can add it on either side. Doesn't matter if you wanted to keep it on the right hand side so that y is kind of alone. That's fine too. Doesn't matter. No big deal. We will take care of that. So what do we do from here? We got the answer. Yay. That is the solution, right? Great. So let's, we're done, right? 
Okay, but here's the thing. Some some people m might be curious about what the solution form from alpha, why, is, why does it look like that, right? How were they able to get the y by itself? And as you can see, it's not very simple looking. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to explore a little bit, not the whole thing, but I just want to show you. And this is not always possible, by the way. For example, if you got an expression like x equals y plus ln y, minus y to the fifth power. I just wanted to make it very quintic. And the ln, because without the quintic, it could, you could probably use a really cool function, you know, the w function. Anyways, hopefully it's that for, so here you can't take out y. You can't extract y from here. It's not possible at all, okay? Great, so, but here we can do something. So here's what we're gonna do to make it a little nicer looking. I'm gonna multiply both sides by three. So 3x equals y cubed minus 3y plus 3c. Okay, hopefully you see what I see. I don't like this 3c. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So I'm going to write it like this. And then negative 3c, I'm going to replace it with another constant. I'll call it k. It's better to call it k because it's simpler. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Great. And look at the left-hand side. Doesn't that look familiar? We've done quite a few problems on the cubic formula, solving cubic equations, uh, and whatever you call this formula, whatever that is. But there's a cubic formula which depends on an identity. So let's go ahead and write down that identity. It is a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. Great. So now we're going to call this y. And everything hopefully falls into place because we now get a y cubed minus 3ab y. Let me emphasize the y value here. It calls a cubed plus b cubed. And compare this to our equation here. You're going to notice that the coefficient of y is negative 3ab. And here it's negative 3. So negative 3ab equals negative 3. And the constant is 3x plus k, which is equal to our constant here, which is a cubed plus b cubed. So we kind of got a system of equations. Let's simplify this a little bit. Write this like a b equals 1 and a cubed plus b cubed equals, maybe I should write it here so it looks uh, nicer as a system. And then, you know, this is what we get. Okay, this is our system of equations. And don't worry, this is not cubic. It is quadratic because a and b are multiplied. So you can make this a quadratic in a cubed or b cubed. So let's go ahead and replace uh, b with 1 over a. And we get a cubed plus 1 over a cubed equals 3x plus k. And if you want, you can call this, I don't know, some other constant like m uh, to make things a little easier. And then from here, you're going to get a to the 6 plus 1 equals m times a cubed a to the 6 minus a, m a cubed plus 1 equals 0. By setting a cubed equal to c, you're going to get c squared minus m c plus 1. m c, master of ceremonies. So you get this quadratic equation, very easy to solve. And then c is equal to a cubed. You just cube it to find the a and so on and so forth. And again, you're going to arrive at the result, but I'm just going to leave it at that because that's going to be way too long. So let's leave it at this. We can find x in terms of y as well as y in terms of x, which explains what the Wolfram Alpha gave us. And you can go ahead and go through this and verify. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow or next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.